EPS, XPS and polyiso, three very similar forms of board insulation used in home construction and in the building construction industry in general. In today's video, we're going to look into how they are made and compare their physical and chemical properties. Let's start with EPS or expanded polystyrene. The monomer styrene is composed of a benzene ring, C6H6, and ethylene. They are both made by the petrochemical industry. Under heat or by an initiator like benzoyl peroxide, the double bond between the carbon atoms is converted into a single bond and a polymer chain called polystyrene is formed. This liquid polystyrene is dropped in water to form droplets or beads. This video shows how polystyrene pellets expand in the presence of steam. Commercially, the polystyrene beads are expanded with blowing agents such as propane, pentane and methylene chloride. The EPS beads are contained in a mold and then heat or steam is applied to it, which causes the small beads to expand and fuse together. While each individual bead is a closed cell, there is significant open space between the beads. These EPS beads can also be molded into large sheets or blocks and then cut by hot wire machines into thinner sheets or any special shapes or forms. EPS is made of 98% air and just 2% plastic. It can be easily dissolved in acetone and leaves behind barely any residue. This high percentage of trapped air makes it an excellent insulator. It's widely used in the building construction industry because it's so versatile. It can be used on roofs, in walls, in floors, below grade, for insulated vinyl siding, in insulated concrete forms or ICF blocks, in structurally insulated panels or SIPs, and in exterior insulated finish systems or EFIS. Outside the construction industry, it is used in packaging peanuts, cushioning for fragile items, and disposable food containers. EPS has many advantages. It has the highest R value per dollar. A 4 foot by 8 foot by 1 inch sheet at Home Depot costs $16.25. This 1 inch sheet has an R value of about R3.18 to R4.6. The closed cell foam and air also make it an excellent insulator. There's a term in the construction industry called thermal drift, which refers to the loss of R value over time because the air trapped inside the insulation dissipates. The big advantage of EPS is that it has no thermal drift or loss of R value over time. There's also no off-casting on site because the blowing agents are trapped inside the beads. That is awesome! EPS doesn't use any CFCs or chlorofluorocarbons or even HCFCs or hydrochlorofluorocarbons in the blowing process. So it's the greenest choice among all the three insulation types that we're going to discuss today. Since it is impermeable to water, it is mold and mildew resistant. It is also 100% recyclable. Now the disadvantages of EPS. The insulation panels are coated in a bromine fire retardant called HPCD or hexabromocyclododecane, which is dangerous to health. EPS can also attract termites and ants. Water can penetrate in the EPS because of the space between the beads. It is also flammable. Finally, it doesn't break down in sunlight and it is not biodegradable. It is a major contributor to trash pollution across the world. Next, let's discuss XPS or extruded polystyrene. This is styrofoam. I grew up calling EPS styrofoam like most people, but XPS is actually styrofoam. Now, chemically, it's made up of the same material as EPS, it's just polystyrene, but rather than being formed into droplets and then expanded, it is foamed up. Get it? Styrofoam, foamed up, styrene? Anyway, uh, the liquid foam is mixed with additives and blowing agents and then extruded through a dye. It is then expanded during the cooling process. 
This produces a tightly packed closed cell insulation. Just like EPS, XPS is made of 98% air and just 2% plastic. Blue XPS is made by Dow Chemical, Green XPS is made by Kingspan, and Pink XPS is made by Owens Corning. They are all the same, the colors help distinguish the manufacturing company on job sites. Now let's discuss the advantages of XPS. It is fairly inexpensive, a 4 foot by 8 foot by 1 inch sheet at Home Depot costs $19.98. This 1 inch sheet has an R value of about R5. The closed cell foam and the air trapped inside it make it an excellent insulator. Since the cells of XPS are so tightly packed, it is more moisture resistant and mildew resistant than EPS, so it is often selected in wetter environments. The compressive strength of XPS is also greater than EPS. There's no thermal drift or loss of R value over time. Finally, it is 100% recyclable. It's also very versatile and can be used below grade, below the slab, and even on basement walls. Now the disadvantages of XPS. It uses HFCs or hydrofluorocarbons as a blowing agent to expand the polystyrene. HFC has a global warming potential 1,300 times higher than carbon dioxide. XPS panels are also coated in the same bromine fire retardant as EPS panels, which can be dangerous to health. XPS can also attract ants and termites even though it's not an organic material. Finally, it's also flammable and it does not break down in sunlight and it's not biodegradable. Lastly, let's discuss polyisocyanurate or polyiso. It is made by combining three main components, MDI or methylene diphenyl diisocyanate, polyol and a blowing agent. When these three components are mixed, along with small amounts of catalyst, an exothermic chemical reaction causes the liquid blowing agent to boil. Evaporation is an exothermic reaction, so let's look at an endothermic one. Mr. Slave, position 7, please. This expands the foam, creating tightly packed, gas-filled cells. The foam has to be sprayed against the substrate to form a rigid panel, so all isopanels are faced with either foil or paper. The foil-faced panels are considered impermeable because they create an exterior vapor barrier. They should never be used with an internal vapor barrier because then you'll have vapor trapped between these two barriers which can cause mold and mildew. Let's discuss the advantages of polyiso. It has the highest R value per inch compared to EPS and XPS. It's about an R6 to an R6.5. Polyiso is also stable over a large temperature range minus 100 degrees Fahrenheit to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. It can be used on roof systems with hot asphalt. In fact, polyiso is used on 70% of commercial roof construction. Polyiso also has a very low water absorption and low vapor transmission. It's not affected by oil-based waterproofing compounds, insecticides or fertilizers when it is properly protected. The polyiso industry uses pentane as a blowing agent which has zero global warming potential and zero ozone depletion potential. One of the disadvantages of polyiso is that it's more expensive than EPS or XPS. A 4 foot by 8 foot by 1 inch sheet at Home Depot costs $21.52. Polyiso uses a halogen fire retardant TCPP which is dangerous to health. It doesn't work very well in temperatures below 50 degrees Fahrenheit because the trapped gases start to condense and they no longer act as an insulator. It is the least eco-friendly option of the three and it has the worst thermal drift. Let me know what you think about this video in the comments below and if you have any experience using EPS, XPS and polyiso that you'd like to share, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll also link my other YouTube page where I post Revit and BIM tutorials. And I'll also link some of my other videos over here. That's all for now. See ya.